If you've ever wanted to add just a little extra something something to your photos or you felt like you didn't quite get the great conditions out in the field and you felt like some light rays would really spice things up in your photo, this is the video for you. Now, photo purists, don't keep watching this video. You will not like the trick that I'm about to show you guys how to do. It's super simple and easy. Hello, everybody. My name's Austin James Jackson. I'm a photographer based in Southern Utah. And in today's video, I'm really excited to show you guys how to create some light rays using the Luminar Neo plugin. It is so incredibly easy. It is by far the easiest way possible to create light rays if you don't get them in the field, which obviously is very, very hard to do. So in today's video, we are going to be starting in Lightroom, jumping over into Luminar Neo. I'm going to show you guys how to create these light rays on a particular image of mine that I shot in the Redwoods. Um, but this works on a wide range of images. This is going to work on things like sunsets and sunrises. If you just want to add like a little bit of sun rays right at the horizon, it's going to work on photos in forests, at waterfalls, things like that. It's going to work a lot better if there's already some light in your scene, um, but you can try it on all sorts of different photos and see how it works for you. Every time that I've tried it on one of my photos, it has worked great. Um, so I'm really excited to show you guys today this really cool software. Also wanted to let you guys know if you're watching this video around when it came out, uh, that Luminar Neo is on sale right now for Black Friday. They're having a huge sale. I believe it's like 50% off. Uh, you can also get an additional $10 off using my code. I've put that down at the link in the bio. Go ahead and click that link, uh, copy that code, put it in. You guys are gonna get a huge discount on the software. It works really, really great. Lastly, I wanna say that I'm not being sponsored or paid to make this video. I'm simply making it because I think it's a great piece of software. Now, if you use my code and click on my link uh, to download the software, I do get a really small kicker, but it is honestly so small. I don't really care about that. I honestly just wanna show you guys this really, really cool technique that I've used on quite a few of my photos, or maybe not quite a few, but I've used it on a few of my photos to create some really, really cool effects. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump right in there. Here we go. All right, well, I know most of you guys are probably Lightroom users, but whether you're using Lightroom, Photoshop, On One, Capture One, DxO, whatever you're using, um, Luminar Neo, which is the plugin we're going to be using to create these sun rays, it will work great as a plugin for most softwares. Um, all that you need to do here in Lightroom and in most other softwares is to click on your photo. Uh, you're going to right click or on a PC, you can control click. Go down to edit in and hit Luminar Neo. And then here is the settings that I like to use. You're just gonna go ahead and click edit. Now after this loads out, it's gonna open up here in Luminar Neo just like this. You're gonna have like lots of weird little preset options on the right. All that we're gonna do is go ahead and switch to the edit tab instead of presets. And once we do that, we are going to have some things appear on the right side of the screen. Now, for this photo, like I said, I wanna show you guys how to create some sun rays. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to creative where it says sun rays, and I'm gonna click place sun center. That's gonna create a little circle here on your screen. That is going to be where the center of the sun is. So if I increase the amount, you can see we have sun rays radiating out from right there, which is not realistic. So we wanna move the sun center to where the sun actually is in our scene. So think about this for a second when you're actually out shooting. Uh, or when you're editing, where was the sun when you were shooting? So in this scene, it's on the right. Now, I know that uh, just because I was here, but if I wasn't here or I didn't remember, it's obvious because there's light hitting the right side of the trees. Um, there's light hitting the kind of right side of this plant. So I know that the sun is like somewhere over in here. So I'm just going to stick it off the screen. And for this, I usually like to have this circle off the screen rather than on the screen, unless the sun is visible in your image. But if it's not, have it off the screen just like that, and then go ahead and bring up the amount. Now you can see as I bring up the amount, it makes the light rays stronger, it makes everything else darker. Um, I'm going to leave this about right here for now. And now I can still move the sun here. If I want to create a certain look. Now, as I move it closer, you can see the sun rays fan out a little bit more. And as I pull it away, the sun rays kind of tighten up a little bit, if that makes sense. Right about there looks good to me. Now, I want to make sure that I'm not making this look unrealistic. So I don't want the sun to be like right here and there to be all this bleed over um, where there's not actually light hitting. I mostly just want the sun rays where the light is hitting, which when I toggle this, you can see is kind of here in the middle of the frame. Somewhere like this is probably looking pretty good. Now you can go in and adjust some settings here, but this is already starting to look really nice. 
So let's go ahead and scroll down and talk about a few of these settings. The first thing is the overall look. That's gonna make things darker or lighter in your photo. Um, you can just adjust this to taste. There's really no right way to do this. Just put it wherever you think looks the best. Um, then we can adjust the sun rays length. So we can have the length go all the way through our photo, which doesn't really look realistic. Or at the same time, we could have it just appear on the corner. It's totally up to you what you want to do. Um, and each photo is going to warrant something different. But for this photo, I kind of want the sun rays to end around here. Would make sense to me. So I think probably about right in there is good for me. And then the penetration is going to affect how much it's going to go through dark things in the image. So I'll show you guys what this does. As I slide this up, it makes the penetration um, less selective. And as I slide it down, it makes it more selective. So you can see how it's just sticking through in those highlights. So you can adjust this to taste as well. Right in there probably feels right to me. And I can click and hold on this eyeball here to toggle it before and after. Now I can go down and adjust some more settings. So we have sun settings. This affects uh, how the sun looks. So in this photo, because I have this dragged off to the edge, it's not going to make a big difference. But in other photos where I might have the sun on the screen, as I adjust these sliders, it will make more of a difference. You can see as I do this now, it's not going to do a whole lot. It does kind of add a little bit of glow up here on the top. Usually I honestly will just max all of these out because uh, I want the sun radius to be large. I want to create the most amount of glow possible. But like I said, for the most part, it's not going to do much. So now we go to the rays settings. This is going to do a lot. So we can adjust the number of sun rays. So if we want less sun rays, we can slide this down. If we want more sun rays, we can slide it up. And we can just choose wherever this feels right to us. And then we can randomize. Now what randomize does is it changes what kind of sun rays. So I guess they just have a wide range of different sun rays here that will be automatically generated. And you can just simply slide this one by one until you find something that you think looks nice. And you can change the number of sun rays and adjust the randomize as much as you want until you get the desired effect. And of course, you can still always click and drag here to move the sun. And I'm feeling like that's looking pretty good. Now, lastly, you can adjust the warmth, the warmth of both the sun and the warmth of your sun rays. So you want to match the warmth of your sun rays. Obviously, I don't want them to be super yellow like this because then they don't look realistic. And I don't want them to be super blue like this because they also don't look super realistic. So we want to find a nice, easy medium there. Somewhere probably about in here is looking pretty good. And maybe a little bit warmer, just like that, I think. No, a little bit less. It's quite the balancing act to figure out exactly how you want things, but I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm really happy with how this looks so far. Um, again, when I toggle this, here's the before and here is the after. And now we have options if we want to do some masking. So maybe you don't like um, a certain spot on your photo. So you can go in and do some masking. So let's say that you wanted it to be a little less strong up here on the top. So we could go in with our brush with erase and we'll do a really soft brush, high strength uh, and low size. Actually, let's lower the strength. This is like opacity in Photoshop. So it's like 20% right now. And we can just paint over this a couple times here and just make it a little bit less strong here. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the masking tools here in Luminar Neo, but this is what we're working with. Um, of course, you could send this back to Photoshop and do some masking there, but uh, I just wanted to show you guys in Luminar Neo what we have to work with. So if you wanted to play with more masking tools, both the linear gradient and the radial gradient would work well. I would not recommend using their mask AI for something like this. That pretty much wraps up how to do sun rays. I want to show you guys one more effect that I like to put on top that I think kind of makes this look really nice. And what that is going to be is the glow. Uh, when you use these sun rays, if you use the glow, they are like peanut butter and jelly. They work really, really well together. So I'm going to go down here and we're just going to increase the amount so we can kind of see what it's doing. Um, and I don't want soft focus. I think I might want glow or Orton effect. Bring this up and I think I'm going to go with glow. All you have to do is click glow. You can bring the amount up. It's gonna help your scene to glow a little bit. Let's actually go Orton effect and we are going to 
lower the opacity. We're going to go down into advanced settings here. Um, we can increase or decrease the softness. You have a lot of options here, but ultimately what this does is it kind of just gives you like a really nice finished look, nice realistic look. You can adjust the brightness. You can bring up the contrast. You can adjust the temperature here as well. If I wanted to make this a little bit cooler, give it a more realistic look. And let's toggle the before and the after. So this just kind of helps your image have a little bit more glow. I think it looks really nice. These two effects are going to help you to create really, really nice sun rays here in Luminar Neo. All right, guys, that is a wrap. Hopefully that helps you guys to create some really cool effects on your photos. I think that you guys will really like using this if you download the software. I believe they do have a free trial online as well if you want to give it a go. But honestly, really, really like this software. I like a lot of the other effects that I've talked about in some other videos. But this Sunrise effect is second to none. There's nothing quite like it on the market. If you guys have any questions or you want to see this on more photos, please let me know down in the comments. Uh, I love hearing from you guys. And if you do want to see more, I'm more than happy to create more videos showing you guys how to use this tool. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. We'll see you guys next time. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Adios.